Now let's see what the section formula is for internal ratio. Now before we discuss the section formula and its derived formula, let's understand what exactly is a section formula for internal ratio. That is, if I take a line and if there's a point between the line joining the two points, then we say that middle, that point divides internal in the ratio. Say for example, I take the line this. If the line AB is with the coordinates of A and B, then if I divide, if the point P divides AB internally, then we say this divides internally. If P is outside of A and B, then we say P divides AB externally. So in this case, point P is between A and B. Therefore, the point P divides the line AB internally and just we have this dividing in some ratio say m and n. So this is a section formula because we have the section of the line which is divided by the point P. So when P divides AB internally in the ratio m and n, we get the section AP and the section PB which are independently calculated by using the section formula. So let's see how the section formula can be constructed using the real xy coordinate system. So initially I will take an xy coordinate system out here with x axis and y axis and the origin which are taken all together. Now from this I wanted to take the line AB in the first quadrant of xy coordinate system. So let me take the line AB somewhere here. The point A is here with x1 and y1 coordinates and the point B is here with x2 and y2 coordinates. And then let me say there's a point P which divides AB in the ratio m is to n where the coordinates of p are x comma y. So here I identify that p is the point which divides a b internally in the ratio m is to n. This is how I get the picture on real x y plane. So this is m and this is n in which it is dividing. So let p divide a b in the ratio m is to n. Then I wanted to find the coordinates of p. The question out here is to find the section formula that is the coordinates of P. So what are the coordinates of P? So using the picture of the coordinates of A which is x1, y1 and coordinates of B which is x2, y2 and the coordinates of P which is x, y, I clearly identify that if I drop a perpendicular, a perpendicular and a perpendicular <coughs> then let me take the respective a dash p dash and b dash on x axis where my a dash is exactly at a distance of x1 so this is x1 and this p dash will be x and this b dash will be the x coordinate which is x2 is how we get here now let me drop a perpendicular from A to the line B, B dash. So if I drop a perpendicular here, say this is some C, which is a perpendicular dropped on this line, then I'm going to use the concept of triangles. So here, I get two triangles when I drop the perpendiculars and join A with C. Again a perpendicular dropped on this line. I get triangles ADP and ACB which are the two triangles which I am going to consider in my initial case. So here I identify that from this diagram consider triangles. A, 
PD and ABC clearly are said to be similar because as you can see here these two angles are equal being the corresponding angles for the two parallel lines. So this is one angle which is equal and this is 90 degrees and one is the common angle. Therefore by double A similarity I can say that the two triangles are similar. So for triangles I can say that clearly triangle APD is similar. The symbol for similarity is this. So triangle APD is similar to triangle ABC. So I get the two triangles similar by double A similarity. Since by a a similarity theorem I get the two triangles similar now we know that when two triangles are similar we have the property that the corresponding sides are in same ratio the similarity property which we have discussed in the previous sessions so the two triangles similar implies corresponding sides are in same ratio that is AP by AB will be equal to AD by AC AD by AC which in turn is equal to the third side <laughs> PD by BC is what I get as equation 1 the corresponding sides in same ratio but as I see here, I clearly see that AP is nothing but M, which I get from the ratio which I have identified here. And similarly, my AB is M plus N because AB is AP plus PB, therefore M plus N. Therefore, in place of AB, I get M plus N is what I get. And similarly, my AD, which is nothing but here, is nothing but equal to a dash p dash which is x minus x1 so therefore my ad which is equal to this is the whole of x minus x1 gives me this so this can be taken as x minus x1 similarly my ac is nothing but equal to a dash b dash and this is nothing but the whole of x2 minus x1 so therefore this minus this gives me this which in turn gives me this therefore my ac is x2 minus x1 is what i get now to continue further with pd let's see what i get with respect to the y coordinates to find pd let me drop a perpendicular from here to here where this and this and this now this is clearly the co coordinate y and this is clearly the coordinate y2 and this is clearly the coordinate y1. So here I get y2, y and y1 which are nothing but for b dash which is already obtained. So I take this as b double dash, p double dash and d double dash, a double dash is what I get for this. So once I know this to be y2, y and y1 along y axis, let's see what would we get for PD geometrically. So as I observe PD, PD is nothing but equal to A double dash P double dash, which is nothing but the whole of y minus y1. So y minus y1 gives me this, which in turn gives me PD. Therefore, the whole of y minus y1 is equal to PD. So PD is substituted with Y minus Y1. Similarly, when I want to find BC in the similar grounds, let's see what is BC equal to. In this diagram, the BC is equal to the length of A double dash B double dash, which is nothing but the whole of Y2 minus Y1, which gives me A double dash B double dash. So this length is the whole of Y2 minus Y1, which in turn 
is BC. Therefore, BC is equal to Y2 minus Y1. So I get this as Y2 minus Y1. Now, once I got all the three equations, then let me take this as equation 2, from which I take the first pair and then the first and third pair and simplify separately for the first pair and the second pair. So let's take the first and the second ratios together to see what exactly I would get in simplification. So in case of this, from equation 2, m by m plus m is equal to x minus x1 by x2 minus x1, which on cross multiplication gives me mx2 minus mx1 is mx minus mx1 plus nx minus so let's not expand this but I take this as m plus n times of x minus m plus n times of x1. So this multiplied with this minus this multiplied with this is what I get in the cross multiplication. Therefore, this on further simplification gives me m plus n times of x. Now, in this case, I take m plus n into x on one side of the left hand side and this on the remaining side, I get mx1 plus nx1 plus mx2 minus mx1, which is again the same. This on simplification gets cancelled. Therefore, I get this to be mx2 plus nx1 is what I get. Therefore, this equals to this implies my x coordinate is mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n is what I get for the x coordinate. Similarly, I take the first and the last to get the y coordinate of p in the similar derivation. So let's see how the y coordinate is obtained by taking the first and the third ratio of equation 2. So again from 2, I have, I'll take the ratio first and the third and find the y coordinate. So in this case, from equation 2, the first ratio which is m by m plus n and the second ratio, the third ratio which is y minus y1 by y2 minus y1 is what I get when I take the first and the third ratio. Then I cross multiply to get the value of y in the similar grounds as that done for the value of x. So on cross multiplication, this gives me m plus n times of y minus m plus n times of y1, which is equal to m times of y2 minus m times of y1 is what I get. Now further simplifying this, I take only y coordinate to the left and the rest of the coordinates there implies my m plus n times of y is equal to my2 minus my1 which is this and this one brought to the right gives me plus my1 plus ny1 is what I get when I take all the terms to the right except the y term which is kept on the left. So with this y term I can see that clearly plus my1 and minus my1 get cancelled. Finally left over with my2 plus ny1 which is left over. Therefore, this equal to this implies my y coordinate is my2 plus ny1 by m plus n, which is the y coordinate of p. So, with the x coordinate and the y coordinate, which is obtained in terms of x1, y1, and x2, y2, and the ratio m is to n, I get a derived formula for finding the point which divides a, b in the ratio m is to n. So indirectly, getting the values of x and y is nothing but getting the coordinates of p. The p which is the point which divides the line a, b in the ratio m is to n internally. So let's 
write the coordinates of P. 